before this video starts I should give a bit of context because I just jumped straight into it without any explanation. In the last video I posted I was working on a shop update and I ended that video with, with everything just being launched so I'm starting this video showing a bit of the packaging process and I also just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much to everyone who placed an order. It was um, yeah, really exciting and it means the world to me. If you want to check out my shop, it's linked in the description. Um, so that's the first half of this video and then later on in the video um, there's lots of drawing and painting and sketchbook tours, so it's exciting. It's a good video, so stick around. <laughs> I'm going to give you a behind the scenes look of what my room looks like whilst I'm packing all these orders because I'm about to move everything around just after I finish filming this so everything can go into the middle that way both me and my mum can pack orders at the same time so we can both be grabbing things but at the moment this is how it works if just one person's packing easy to grab stickers there uh, this box is filled with business cards which look like that a thank you notes which look like this and freebie stickers every order gets a little out of them logo sticker up here i have a5 envelopes in here i have a4 prints and a4 envelopes i have loads more envelopes as well they're just in in the wardrobe these are for packaging a5 prints this is for packaging stickers i have all the new prints that i've printed that i haven't got around to actually putting in my drawer yet and then under the desk i've got this drawer which has all my smaller prints organized um yeah so i need to put all of these prints are and organize them into here. At the back, I've got some of my tape. I've got a lot more tape, but this is just what I'm storing in here at the moment. I don't feel like I really advertise this pin very well, um, but I do have a pin. I think it's really cute. On the floor, I've got a pile of boxes that have been pre-folded. Oh, and I've got my little bees up here as well. At the moment, there's just a few of these guys left. Um, I think most of them have sold, but they're really cute. This is a new setup so that we can pack, two people can pack at the same time. Stickers have been moved to the middle. Basically, everything has just been moved to the middle. Well, as much as we can. This is the setup now. I was thinking it would be cute if you like a little write a little name for each one and you can get a little piece of tape, you know, something like that. There you go. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to write something to it. Oh, uh, mm, I'll write it on a different thing. Can you double fold it? I've done that. And then fold it. Ronnie's jaws looks neater. Wait, are you peeling off the thing? Yeah. Oh. I 
think I watched a video on this. Someone like how. Hello, it's a voiceover now. I just wanted to explain what's going to be going on in the rest of this video because all the footage you've just seen was filmed a few weeks ago when I was doing my shop update. Also, I should mention if you're interested in any prints or having a nose at my shop, it is linked in the description if you're interested. Yeah, for the rest of this video, I'm working on a children's book idea that I have. I've recently got an agent, well, not recently, it's probably been like it's been a few weeks at this point, but I've got an agent now and it's all really exciting and she specialises in children's books and children's like publishing. So I'm brainstorming this book because basically she showed these publishers my characters and they really liked them and they wanted to see a bigger story with them. So now I'm working on putting together this story. It's all exciting, but I don't want to like, get my hopes up, cause, hopes up because I could do all this work and nothing could happen. But you know, I'm trying my best to come up with like the best story I can and at the moment I really like this story and I've gotten really invested in all the characters that I've come up with and this is just the journey of me figuring stuff out. So I hope you like the rest of this video, there's gonna be a lot of drawing and character sketching, like character design stuff. The first thing you can see me working on are my ladybirds. I have a lot of different creatures in mind for this story, I don't want to go into too much detail about what the story is about, like what happens in the story but there's lots of different woodland creatures and it's all based around this parade so I need lots of different creature, de creature designs, a mixture of insects and just like small creatures like I've got toads and there's a mole, worms, spiders, ladybird, butterflies, mice, you know them sorts of creatures so I'm, I'm trying to draw them all in my style. I don't draw characters very often but when I do I always really enjoy it. It's something that I always think in my head I'm not very good at just because I'm, I'm so used to doing like landscapes and environments but then whenever I get around to it I'm like you know actually I, I quite enjoy this and I should do this more often so it's been nice to just spend an entire week or at this point it's probably been like two weeks to just focus on characters and coming up with a story it's been fun, especially because I'm really invested in these mice characters as well, so to just create a world that my mice characters live inside. Oh, I've just probably realised at this point you've not even seen my mice characters, I'm not showing them in the video yet, but you'll see them a little bit later on. But that's the ladybird. And then the following day I was working on a mole character, which hopefully will feature in the story. And I think at first this mole was like, I weren't really feeling it, but then later on I added some colour, just on Photoshop, you'll see like right at the end. And like now the mole character is my favourite one, I'm like obsessed with the mole. <laughs> I'm going to leave you with a little bit of music and then I'll be back to give you a sketchbook tour of all the work I've been doing. wanted to show you inside my sketchbook and all the ideas that have been coming up with for the past week or so for this children's book which I'm sure I've told you about by now. So for a bit of context 
ages ago now, like months ago. I was just drawing these mice for fun. Um, and then I drew this little guy here. He was now the new standard. I wanted all my mice to live in the same world as this guy. This was just for fun. I didn't really have any idea in mind. And then I was just thinking, well, how about I do um, an illustration for my Etsy shop just to turn into a print. And I came up with this mouse parade. If you're in a parade, then there's also gonna have to be instruments. So then I started drawing them. Uh, with instruments. The more I was coming up with this idea, the more I was like, hold on, there's something here. There's this there's, there's could be a story in this. Fast forward, I don't know, a month or so, and then I, I get myself an agent, which is all very exciting. Um, and she wanted to know like all my ideas that I have for children's books. And I was thinking, well, I've kind of got this mouse idea, but at the moment it's literally just, I've drawn a few mice and I think they could make a nice story. I'll show you my other sketchbook actually, because I have a few things in this as well. All these different insects and I love this butterfly. So I, I know I, I want the butterfly to be part of the story as well. Yeah, I was just drawing these mice in different environments. I loved this sketch and I turned this into a painting. And I loved these characters so much, I actually turned them into <laughs> stickers that you can buy in my shop. Oh, this is also a print as well. And I loved the combination of painting with collage. Oh, I love this drawing so much. This is kind of what gave me the idea of the mouse parade because they was kind of on a mission going somewhere. And I was thinking, how about if there, there's loads of them and they're all in a parade um, and they're all playing instruments and carrying banners and flags and all the parade things. <laughs> love this sketch. And I was like, this this could be in a children's book. There's something going on here. So these are like all the things I sent to my agent, just these sketches. Oh, I also did a finished painting as well of some of the mice playing instruments. And I showed this to my agent as well. And then she showed them to um, some publishers and then one of them was really interested in my mice. So that's kind of why I'm doing all this work now because they're, all I know is that there's a publisher who's really interested in my characters and wants to see more. So now my agent has kind of set me the task of trying to flesh out this story more. I'm starting to get it really figured out and I'm really excited about it. I don't want to like give away too much about it and like what actually is actually happening but I'll happily show you the characters that I've been working on for it. So I started off drawing frogs, these aren't very good um, and I just carried on going until I liked them and I started to get closer with these guys and then finally I drew these ones and I just absolutely love these guys. This one here I think I'm going to paint this today because I really like it. I drew this scene with all the frogs, like, because I imagine these, like, really chaotic characters and they're bouncing all over each other and banging into each other because they can't quite control where they jump. So it's just going to be quite a chaotic scene of all these frogs overlapping and all at different heights and jumping all over the page. So I was trying to get that across in that. Then I moved on to worms. I imagine a bit of the book will be set underground because it'd just be nice to have a, a change in environment and also like mice dig and live underground so it makes sense. So I was coming up with these worm characters. I was struggling at first because they're just quite, you know, they're quite boring. They're just one long little noodle. But then I came up with this design. I love it. Um, I kind of had the idea that the body of the worm is kind of tattooed with patterns um, and they also have a saddle as well because I imagine because in, in this story I imagine the worms being like the horses of the world <laughs> like people ride them and there's like a stampede of worms but it's all underground then I moved on to the ladybirds I was trying to find a way to include the pattern into the, the design but also make them wear clothes because basically every animal has to wear clothes because I want them to be like anthropomorphic so I thought by giving them a cardigan with like little bobbles on that makes them look like ladybirds and it also gives them clothes. So that worked really well. And then I was trying to draw them in different poses for the idea I have in mind for the like interaction that they have with the main character. I don't know if I said, but this is the main character. She plays the triangle, she's the main character. So all of these animals she's gonna interact with. Then I moved on to spiders. I was having fun with that, really enjoyed putting them in dresses. I, I, could, I feel like I could have very easily made the spiders look quite creepy and made them into that kind of like bad guys uh, but I was trying to stay away from that because I just felt like that was the obvious way to go so I was trying to make them look as friendly and as cute as possible. Then yesterday I was doing moles uh, I struggled with the mole because they're just quite boring they're just like a brown blob with two tiny little eyes I mean the hands are quite interesting uh, but the hands are also quite creepy <laughs> so I was struggling a bit with that and then I was trying to do all these thumbnails basically in, in the story I imagine the mole being like huge compared to the mouse so I only really imagine its face being included in the uh, illustration so I was only just focusing on the face because I want like basically this tiny mouse and then this giant face and maybe it starts with just like a brown 
well like a dark black shadow and it just looks like a mound of dirt and then like on the next page you see these eyes open first it looks scary but then you realize oh she's actually quite helpful that's everything i've done there's all my sketches all my characters i'm not saying too many of my ideas because i don't want to because obviously like things are going to change and i don't really know what ideas are going to stay in the story i'm going to draw a frog now well paint a frog now to just test out the media in the same style as these guys. Depending on how long that takes, I might do some more like environment sketches, uh, but that's where I'm at. Here I am painting the toads. I think I was calling them frogs before, but I meant to say toads. I keep doing that, messing up. I just feel like toads are more of a menacing animal. <laughs> frogs are quite friendly, but like toads are kind of like the mean version of a frog. <laughs> or maybe not, maybe they just get a bad rep. These characters are going to be like kind of a little bit mean, so I don't want them to look very friendly. This is going to be such a random reference, but you know in Spongebob when the anchovies come? If anybody knows what I'm going on about, the anchovies in Spongebob, that's what I imagine these frogs being like. Anchovies! And they all come in and they're like, rrr, 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 and they're all just like mindless, like identical copies of each other and there's loads of them. That's what these frogs are. <laughs> they're Spongebob anchovies. I was just painting them, I wanted to try out painting them in the same way that I paint my mice just figuring out how to do that really. It was a bit of a learning curve and part of me feels like I put a little bit too much detail into them, um, but I really like them. I love the circles all over their body. Like I used a mix of watercolor, colour pencils and my crayons, their Caran d'Ache crayons, and I think they turned out really nice. Part of me doesn't really know what media I want to do this um, the illustrations in for this book. I kind of have my art is separated into two categories. There's my collage, art and there's my painting art and at the moment they're very different and I don't think that's a bad thing but part of me wants to figure out a way to combine the two of them still figuring that one out but then also part of me wants to do just solely like a really detailed painting because I love getting really into the details of things but not detailed as in like like rendering something a lot but details just as in there's a lot going on in the scene and there's lots of tiny little elements going on but I don't really you know, I won't, I don't know what I'm saying. I like to paint things detailed because there's a lot going on in the scene, but I don't put a lot of detail into those things, if that makes any sense. Or maybe I do, you might look at these frogs and think they're really detailed, but I just think they look detailed because there's a lot of like loose lines on them. Basically, I want to try and stay loose, but do it in a detailed way. I think my sketches look a lot different to how I actually paint. My sketches are so loose and I try to keep that when I paint but it doesn't always happen. I just love the way I sketch and I'm trying to figure out a way to carry that looseness through into my painting, still figuring it out, but I thought these frogs were a good first attempt. Uh, I think I've rambled on long enough about these frogs. Have we moved on to another thing? Maybe, I don't know. We'll see what happens when I edit it. What I'm doing now is I'm doing a big detailed sketch of the mouse house, the mouse house, I don't know, the mouse hole probably. It's underground but it's also in a tree. So I'll leave you with that sketch and then I'll talk to you in a bit.
I should probably explain why I'm doing this drawing. Well, it's done now, why I did this drawing. And this is the, uh, I wanted to just do a bit of an environment sketch because obviously I've been drawing a lot of characters. I wanted to give it a, give a go at the environment and I thought it would be just so cute to do like an underground scene to see like where the mice live. And then I was brainstorming of how to make it more interesting. And I was like, oh, what if I do kind of like half tree on top? So all this here is tree like the tree trunk and then everything below this line is now underground. It's a bit hard to tell what's going on without colour so I have added a little bit of colour on Photoshop but not much like I was originally I was going to try and colour the whole piece um, but just I just think it would take way too much time so I've just done like a simple um, bit of colour on Photoshop but I'm going to do some close-up shots for you here. And then you see the ladders go underground and they're all, they're getting their instruments ready and they're preparing all like their, their big banners and their bunting, um, getting it all ready for the parade. It's busy, busy, frantic morning, I imagine, of the parade. Um, and you can even see like there, you can see they've been like cutting up papers and they've been making bunting, a little bit of the bedroom. <laughs> and then there's the main character over here, still tucked up in bed with a little triangle that she's holding. This took me ages to draw like a, an entire like the evening of one day and then the entirety of another day. Really happy with it. I'm working on now the PDF document that I'm going to send off with all my ideas on. Um, I'll do a screen record because it will look nicer. So this is the file that I've been working on. Um, I've got everything organised into things. I need to add a lot of writing to this. I have written everything that I'm going to pop in. I'll just show you all the pictures for now. So this is that drawing I was just showing you then. I just quickly added in a bit of colour to make it more obvious which where the dirt was and where the holes were because I don't think it's very obvious without the colour but yeah I was going to colour this whole thing in properly but just realising the time it would take I was like you know what I think I'll leave that for now um it's just bits and bobs really of of that of the story and all this is going to obviously have like writing that goes along with it I took some of my favourite characters and I added colour to them just like really loosely and um, let me find the you can see it without the lines on top of it it's very messy just so they can get an idea of what the colour will look like. A few interactions with the main character. This is this has like actual paintings that I do, did that I done. <laughs> this has like the real paintings that I did, and I also put the mouse in because I wanted you to see like how I imagine the scale will be. Maybe it's more like that. The mouse will be a lot smaller than, but the mouse will be the smallest creature out of all of them. The sketch I did with all of the toads. I think I was saying frogs before, but I meant to say toads. The worm drawing again. Very, very loosely adding colour. Where's the lines? Let me find the lines. There you go. Ooh, that looks bad without the, without the lines. The mole. Oh, this one turned out so cute. I think that's my favourite one. Um, spiders. I didn't add any colours to the spiders because I'm not really sure what colours I would do them in at the moment. Finally, the butterfly. And that I do need to swap out this mouse to be the main character mouse because this is just a random mouse at the moment. Um, and that's everything that I've done so far. So I'm, I need to put in all the words and tidy it up a bit, make it look a bit nicer. And then that's what I'll be sending off. I think that's where I'm going to end the video. I'll just, where, what am I going to end it on? I'll end it on this because it's cute. There you go. I'll zoom in on that. Right. I'll end the video here. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the process of me trying to come up with a children's book. Oh, I've just seen a mistake. I've gone outside of the lines. Oh my goodness me. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. I think I'm going to make a video about an art fair that I'm prepping for. So next week I'm going to be doing lots of art fair prep. Hopefully you find that interesting and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.